Welcome to the Building a DSPIC SMPS System Web Seminar. I'm Bill Hutchings, a Product Marketing Manager for Microchip. This is the agenda for the course. We'll cover a wide variety of issues that arise during the design of a switch mode power supply, including methods for sensing current, bias supplies, gate driver issues, transient response, and how topology choices affect system design. Current measurement techniques. Resistors are the most common and lowest cost method for current sensing. Typically, a low ohmage resistance, 10 to 100 milliohms, is inserted in the current path, and the voltage drop across the resistor is measured and the current is calculated. This method dissipates power, reduces the system efficiency, and the associated voltage drop can affect the output voltage regulation. If a measured node is at a high voltage potential, then additional circuitry may be required for voltage translation. A current transformer is a transformer where a low resistance primary winding is placed in series with a current path. The transformer provides voltage isolation and scaling, but it cannot be used for DC currents. The transformer is also bulky and may be expensive. The Hall effect sensor has a coil that is placed in series with the current flow and a Hall effect sensor and amplifier. The Hall effect sensor can monitor AC to DC currents, but these sensors are very expensive. Inductor current sensing can be done by monitoring the voltage across the inductor's resistance. It is slow because of required filtering. The MOSFET has an intrinsic source to drain resistance, RDS on. The voltage drop across the MOSFET is an indication of the current flow. The RDS on value varies from device to device and with temperature. This method does not provide for high accuracy. The sense FET is a FET that has an extra terminal for sensing the voltage across a small subsection of the FET. It has the same issues with temperature and unit variations. Where to sense current? In this boost converter example, we show the possible locations where current can be measured in an SMPS circuit and the associated advantages and disadvantages for each choice. At location one, measuring average input current has little benefit. At location two, measuring inductor current is very useful in current mode control but the high common mode voltage at this node requires circuitry for level shifting for use by the controller. At location three, peak inductor current can be measured at this node just before the transistor is turned off. This location has the advantage that this node is close to ground potential, which minimizes current sense circuitry complexity. At location four, peak inductor current can be sensed at this node but like node two, a high common mode voltage exists, which can complicate the current sense circuitry. At location five, the load current is measured. Because the capacitor also supplies current to the load, this node is not a useful point to measure current for traditional current mode control applications. This location is a good point to measure current for load sharing, and it is also a great place to monitor load current transients for modern digital power converter control systems. Classical control systems are limited in their response time by the inductor and output capacitor. While the DSPIC SMPS can immediately detect load transients at the output. Bias supply. The bias supply is the power supply for the power supply controller and the transistor drive circuitry. The simplest approach is to use a three-terminal linear regulator to regulate the input supply voltage down to the voltage required for the controller. Most linear regulators have a limited input voltage range, typically 25 to 30 volts is the maximum input specification. Power dissipation becomes a problem with high voltage inputs. The bias supply may dissipate more power than the rest of the supply itself. Multiple voltage requirements, one for the controller, another for the MOSFET gate drivers, further complicates the design of the bias supply. 
Small switch mode voltage regulators are, by, are available for supplying low power, less than 2 watts, that are designed to operate with the input voltages of 380 volts DC. These devices are often designed to operate with a small transformer. The transformer enables multiple bias supply voltages to, to be obtained inexpensively with multiple output windings. The bootstrap approach uses a linear regulator just to supply power for a few moments. When the controller begins operating, a transformer windering or a buck converter provides power to operate the PWM control circuitry and the linear voltage regulator is shut off. This approach can be very cost effective and efficient. Gate driver issues. The gate drive for low side transistors where the source terminal is tied to the controller grounds pin is easily implemented with an industry standard FET driver such as Microchip's TC442X family of devices. The high side transistors in bridge circuits, buck converters, buck boost converters, and two transistor forward converters present a couple of issues. One, translating the gate control signal up above the source pin voltage, and two, providing a floating power supply to the gate driver circuit. The high side transistors in bridge circuits, buck converters, buck boost converters, and two transistor forward converters present a couple of issues. One, translating the gate control signal up above the source pin voltage, and two, providing a floating power supply to the gate drive circuit. In some low voltage, less than 20 volts, high side applications, P-channel MOSFETs can be used to ease the difficulty of driving the high side transistors. In higher voltage applications, P-channel devices encounter the same gate drive issues as N-channel devices. High side gate drive. High speed optocouplers can provide thousands of volts of isolation between its inputs and outputs, but optocouplers are expensive and they have slow propagation times of between 100 nanoseconds to one microsecond. They require a power source to run the gate driver circuitry, such as a small DC to DC converter. These DC to DC converters, available in small SIP packages, add cost. The advantage of optocouplers is that they can provide any duty cycle ratio, and their operation is independent of the operation of the power supply, a handy feature when debugging a system. High voltage gate drivers are expensive, but offer a wide range of operating speeds. 30 nanoseconds to 900 nanoseconds. They use a high voltage silicon process to perform a signal voltage translation. The high voltage drivers use a bootstrap voltage supply to supply power to one of the gate drive circuitry. The bootstrap circuit requires the transistors to be switching and there are duty cycle and frequency limitations. The transformer coupled high side driver is the lowest cost circuit and can operate up to 500 kilohertz. The transformer-based driver has the advantage that the transformer can couple energy as well as control the signal. Transformers operate on a constant volts seconds basis so that narrow pulse widths create voltage spikes. The extremes of duty cycle ratios are difficult to support. For more information, here are references to some important documents that contain a lot of information about the DSPIC-30F family of devices. The family reference manual contains detailed information about the architecture and peripherals, whereas the programmer's reference manual contains a thorough description of the instruction set. For device-specific information, such as pinout diagrams, packaging, and electrical characteristics, the device data sheet listed here is the best source of information. Thank you for attending this web seminar.